Hi everyone, my name is Ellis and I don't want no shrub. A shrub is a plant that can get no love from me. <laughs> so I've been a little bit diligent in the Vancouver plant group and I have been finding some good deals on some rare and uncommon plants that are all tiny babies, so that's probably why they are on a good deal, <laughs> or I believe it was a good deal. At least I don't miss the money I spent, and some of them I even got for free, because I have the best friends. So I wanted to show you all the rare and uncommon plants that I have collected right now. So my first uncommon plant is the Monstera SP Peru. Uh, it's sometimes called Monstera Carstianum, which I just found out today is not a proper scientific name for this plant. But nonetheless, it is super pretty. Uh, it has sometimes been going by Marble Pothos as a common name. And you know how, what I feel about common names, but it is super super pretty i love these highly textured leaves they are like they are in braille and <laughs> they're all bumpy and nice and deep green you don't see these plants well i've never seen this plant in a plant store here or at a nursery so, but i know that over in europe they have been popping up there so it's like a fairly uncommon plant but it's so pretty nonetheless and I really love it and I'm excited to get it to grow and build a moss pole for it because now I'm gonna put all of my plants on moss poles. My next uncommon plant is my Syngonium pink confetti or just confetti. I always wanna say pink confetti because it is pink with confetti. I really like Syngoniums. They're such a fun plant and I, there's not many of the varieties that I find very attractive because sometimes I feel like the coloration of the foliage is just muddy and weird, but people go crazy over them. But I feel like the confetti one, it has such distinctive pink and crisp speckles. Um, the older leaf doesn't seem to have a lot of it. I don't know why but the new leaf does, and I can already see on the leaf that is about to unfurl here that it's gonna have a lot of pink on it. And I have to say, I really like this soil that it's in. It just looks nice, but we'll see if it's good. At least it has been putting out really healthy roots. I told you that my philodendron collection was about to get bigger, but I wasn't expecting it to get this bigger this fast. I got these from Crystal of Philodendron Scandens Mykens. I have had a lot going on in the past week, so I haven't had a proper time to take care of all of the planty stuff that I want to take care of. I haven't put this in a proper propagation box and cut it up. Um, so I've just been keeping it in a Ziploc bag with Spagman moss, but I am so thrilled to have this velvety philodendron in my life now. Then I got my hands on philodendron burl marks, Alba variegata, and I honestly feel like this little leaf sometimes looks like a funky little cheese. If I can source the images, I will put some images of these uh, plants when they're more mature so you can properly see what they're gonna turn into. But I just want you to see my babies so you can follow my journey through watching my babies grow up. Ooh, so cute. I've been trying to just keep them in like not a super high humidity because I want my plants to be able to like acclimate to normal high house humidity because I am trying to avoid as much as possible being stuck with an exoterra. Not that I think there's anything bad about them, but I just really like to be able to touch my plants and, and look at them more easily and 
not have cabinets everywhere while I'm in such a small place. And then also like if they, if I manage to get them to grow and get really big and if I end up selling propagations myself, I want them to be easily adjusted into people's homes as much as I can and as much as the plant can tolerate. Then I have this beautiful philodendron melanochrysum. This is definitely like one of my favorite velvet leaf philodendrons. I've seen so many beautiful ones on Instagram and on the group and Googling on the internet. This one is perfect for a moss pole. As it matures, the leaves get like bigger and then like start to get longer and longer. And it's a fairly fast grower, which is always fun for me because I like fast growing plants. And then it has a little baby leaf here and a tiny baby here. Whoop, focus. <laughs> okay, it's not focused at all there. I feel like this should just be a pillow that I can put my head on. Then I was able to find a baby of my dream plant, a philodendron plowmanii. These guys are absolutely stunning when they get big like they have these big plush pillowy leaves and they have like almost this like i don't know if you can see it but kind of like a silvery like it's not very gation but it's just the way that light how the light hits them yeah i'm pretty sure it's not very gation but i know that like the philodendron mame or a hybrid of philodendron mame and plowmaniae. They can be sil more silvery and silvery variegated. It's just so adorable. After it was pointed out to me that my Raphidophora decursiva that I bought was mislabeled as Apropenum pinnatum and was in fact not an Apropenum pinnatum, my friend Crystal went into chopping action and decided to give me some proper Pinnatum cuttings. So I have this regular form. I am, I, I don't know if you call it regular form or not. This would be the basic Apipernum pinnatum. It already has one split leaf and it, this leaf is a little sad, but it will be okay. I am very excited to see this plant grow. Then I got Apipernum pinnatum alba vargata. This one is so cool. I was looking up photos of it and when the variegation is in full force and it's climbing up a moss pole with all the split leaves, it just looks so stunning. And oh, I love apipremnums. 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 Ah. There's not a whole lot of irrigation to go there, but I am pretty sure with the proper light conditions, it will push out new leaves with higher variegation, no doubt. That's what, that's what they do. And after getting me a Alpa Varigata one, she wasn't done and gave me an Apipernanum skeleton key. These guys are so funky. The mature leaves turn into this really funny skeleton key look and are just so cool. Boop, boop, boop. And then really to add to my Apropenatum collection, I found a Cebu Blue that Cat Santos was selling. So the Vancouver plant group that I'm in, we have purges and like deal or no deal purges where you post a thread of plants and then you post maybe your base price or you have the price open and then you tell them what price you're willing to pay and they will tell you deal or no deal. And Kat for Nurse This Week gave most of what she made from that um, purge to the money to a nurse charity. And so I did not feel bad at all at spending money to get one of my dream plans these guys get also very beautiful split leaves as they get bigger if you allow them to climb 
but you can also allow them to trail. I think they look very beautiful either way. But now that I'm moss pole obsessed, I will definitely get a moss pole for these guys. Like soon you will like see a video from me and there's just gonna be moss poles everywhere. And I'm gonna be spending all day, every day, keeping them moist, keeping them humid, keeping them damp. So my friend Amy, who has the channel Wolfgang's Mama, she has really gotten me into Hoyas. I never thought Hoyas would be a plant that I would be so obsessed with. So every time I see something interesting now when I go out, I send her a photo and, and I ask her about them, what kind of Hoya it is and if it's something interesting and exciting and if I should get it. So the other day I went to Rona, which is kind of like Lowe's if you're in the States and they get like a lot of stuff from Lowe's. I think it's I think it might be the same company in a way I'm not sure but I'm I might just be making that up anyway they had a big basket of Hoya Bidobala and I thought since it was like a huge basket maybe it was like something very common and I could find it everywhere and I didn't need to rush and buy it and after I got home she replied back to me and told me that they were a super cool Hoya and you don't find them easily here in Canada so I went there back the next day to go buy it and of course it was gone. So I posted the photo in the Vancouver plant group and I found the person that had bought it and she offered to give me cuttings. And it should also be mentioned that it is mislabeled as Bidobala. It's actually Hoya Special Affinity Burton Eye. And when these guys get tan or you should just say sun stress, they like give out these very beautiful colors on the foliage. And these are pretty fast growers. And I don't know, they're just like fun little round leaves. And thank you so much, Liz Hernandez, for giving me some cuttings. And then from another perch, because now I'm Hoya obsessed, I got this Hoya Iliagorum. I know nothing about it other than the foliage is so cool it has these really long leaves that curve around it's currently in perlite should probably switch it over to moss or some nice soil but i think it's still doing pretty well in here and it's just enjoying its life before you know it, my home will be filled with Hoyas. And with the purchase, I got this Hoya for free and I have no idea which Hoya that is. I can't remember the name. It just says Free D. These were my rare and uncommon plants that I currently have. Before we know it, I might have even more. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my Instagram for more plant stuff or my Facebook page and please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.